Good morning. I want to know how everybody is doing. I've missed you so much. Thank you for those of you who have emailed me and those of you that have had time to chat. Also for those of you that have called in or not called in but uh, emailed me and wanted uh, tutoring one-on-one -on -one, and we've been able to do that on Google Meet. So I wanted to open that up to you guys uh, as a class. Just email me if you feel like you need more help than just an email. Uh, we can work out some other way of communicating that's easier for you. Well, I want you to know that I've been so bored that I've been talking to numbers lately. Uh, yes, I have. Now, we've all overheard what zero said to eight, right? Yeah, well, what did zero say to eight? Nice belt. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And you may have heard that seven is afraid of eight. Yeah. Well, if you hadn't heard that, it's true. Seven is definitely afraid of eight because we all know that seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Yeah. And also, uh, I was wondering, you know, and I was having kind of a conversation with seven and kind of asking him, you know, why did you eat nine? Well, seven responded with, well, everybody knows you're supposed to eat three squared meals a day. Hmm. Yeah, I've been pretty bored. <laughs> let's move on. All right, let's talk about perimeter and area. Now, your lesson uh, this week was to study a little bit about perimeter, reminding yourselves about those formulas. But let's talk about the difference between perimeter and area. So if we have this garden here, we have the fence and we have the air. If you think about perimeter, perimeter is the fence around the garden and the garden itself, the land there, that's the area. And then of course the air above it would be representing volume. So you can kind of think about the three different um, dimensions as being three different parts of this garden. So one dimension would be perimeter, the fence. Two dimensions would be area, would be the ground. And then three dimensions would be including the height there with the volume. Okay. All right, now what is perimeter? Well, from your lesson, you learned that perimeter was basically whatever is the length around the outside of the object. And we have a bunch of formulas that we can use to uh, calculate out the perimeter. For example, for this one, for a triangle, we can add A plus B plus C, and we get this formula A plus B plus C is the perimeter of a triangle. Or you can think about it as adding all the sides. Okay. Same thing with the quadrilateral here. We can write this fancy formula A plus B plus C plus D, or you can just say, I'm going to add all the sides up, okay? Now, this one is actually kind of helpful. You can do length plus width plus length plus width and get the perimeter. Or you can just add length plus width and then double it, and that will give you the perimeter as well. That one's kind of useful. This one, I think, though, is even more useful as a formula. If you know the length of one side, and you know that it's a square, all the sides are the same, then the length of that one side times four would give you the length all the way around, which would be the perimeter. And of course, you can extend that to all regular polygons. If you have this side length and you know it's a perfect hexagon, a regular hexagon, then you can multiply by six. So six times the one side would give you the length all the way around the perimeter there. Okay, so all of those fancy formulas, you can take hours and hours and memorize them, or you can just remember that perimeter is add all the sides. Pretty basic. Okay, so here's some formulas here, just in case we wanted to use them, um, but basically we're just going to add all the sides here. So for this triangle, and you may want to pause the video for a moment and take a look at uh, what you think the answers to these are before I go over the, the answers. So let me pause for a second while you stop the video. Okay, well hopefully you've had a chance to uh, get those answers. So here we have three plus
plus 4. Now, C would be what? If this is a right triangle, it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So 3 plus 4 plus 5 would be how much? 7 plus 5 is 12. Okay, so the perimeter here would be 12. I'll let you go ahead and do the perimeter of this one. So if you're going to add 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, you should get... 18. Good. And these are all in units because it's one dimension. So it's just length, even if it's length all the way around. Okay, for this one, the rectangle. 3 plus 4 gives me 7. And this side would be 4 also, and this side would be 3. So we could just double that and get 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 4, which is 7 plus 7, which is 14. And over here, the side is 3. If it's a square, 3 times 4 sides would be 12. And here, we have the side of 4 times 6, 24. Okay, so hopefully you got all those correct. All right, now, that all's great, except for it doesn't really work for a circumference of a circle, because... The circumference, you can't add all the sides because a circle doesn't have sides, obviously. Okay. For a circle, we need a formula. And we calculated out that if you take the circumference of a circle and you divide it by the diameter, then you get pi. So the circumference divided by uh, the diameter equals pi. So here's an example of how to work this formula. If we take the diameter of 3 and we plug it into the formula, you get the circumference is pi times the diameter. Now I used pi instead of the symbol there because it's hard on the uh, PowerPoint to get the, the pi symbol. So hopefully you can understand what I'm saying there. But it's, So the formula is pi times d here. Now if we take the diameter here and we plug in 3 for d, you get circumference is pi times d of 3, so pi 3. If we put that in the right order, usually the pi goes at the end of the sentence, and so you get circumference is 3 pi units. Now you can leave your answer like this. This is the exact answer, because remember pi goes on forever, so we really can't uh, deal with it, except for in terms of a symbol, unless you want to round. So if it asks you to round, you can round pi into 3.14 or 3.1415, depending on how accurate you want to be. And then you multiply 3 times 3.14 and you get 9.46 units. Okay? So circumference is a little different because you can't just add all the sides. You have to memorize that formula there. Okay, so that's a review of perimeter. Let's go on and talk about area now. Okay, when we're doing area, we always think of it in square units. So if you were thinking about, for example, your yard, and you want to fill it up with grass, you have to go out and buy squares of grass. So your area of the ground is the number of squares that will fit in your yard. Okay, all area formulas basically started with the rectangle. So if you think about the rectangle, and I think we all remember this from, you know, back in sixth grade and, and eighth grade and all of that, we did uh, area of rectangles. And the area of a rectangle is the length times the width. Now, why is that? Let's think about that. If I were to have 10 chairs along this side and five chairs along this side, how many chairs would be in the area? It would be 10 chairs times five chairs. That would give me 50 chairs. So if you think about the area is multiplying the length times the width, you can figure out how many squares would fit in this rectangle. So that's pretty easy to understand. Now, if we take this idea of area of a rectangle being length times width, 
we can apply it to different shapes to figure out what would be the formula for that particular shape. So let's think about a square here. Now we know the length and width of a, a rectangle multiplied together will give you the area. So let's do this for the square. The square is length right here times width. But we notice that this side length here is the same size as this side length right here, which is the width. So if we just multiplied this side times this side, we would get the area. Well, this side, well, let's call that S for side. This side times this side would be side squared, or side times side. So it's just like length times width, but we can simplify it into side squared. Okay, let's take a look at another one. What about a triangle? Well, if you notice, you can cut a rectangle right along the diagonal here, and you get a right triangle on this one. So when you're talking about the area of a triangle, you're really talking about the area of half of a rectangle right here, half of a rectangle. Okay, so if I just take the formula for a rectangle, length times width, and cut it in half, I will have the area of the triangle. So how does that apply to this? Where did we get this word base and height? Well, let's take a look at this. So this is the length in the triangle. We're calling that the base of the triangle because we usually don't call this side of a triangle length. We usually call it base. And for a triangle, we usually call this the, the uh, height. We don't usually call it the width. So it's just using a different name for the same dimensions. So here we have base times height, in other words, previously called length times width. But then we have this part cut off. So we have to times it by one half in order for the formula to work. So the area of this triangle is one half of the rectangle. In other words, one half of the length times the width, which we're now calling one half base times height. So you can see where this formula came from right here from the rectangle. Okay. What about a circle? Well, again, unfortunately, we can't use the rectangle to talk about the area of a circle. We have to use pi. Now, I won't go into how, um, how we formulated this um, formula. That's another discussion altogether, and uh, I believe I have a video about that, so we'll, uh, we'll move on and just use the formula here. But it basically came from, if I made rectangle shapes or square shapes in this area, I could approximate how much area is in there. Well, if I made the rectangles or squares even smaller, I could get closer to the edge here. And if I made them even smaller and smaller and smaller, I would get closer and closer and closer to the area of the circle. And so by doing that, we find out that the area of the circle is actually pi times the radius squared, not the diameter. That would be two times the radius. This one is pi times the radius squared. So keep those two separate in your mind. Circumference is pi times uh, the radius times two. Or in other words, circumference is pi times diameter. Versus area is pi times r times r, not r times two. And so it's pi r squared. And we know that's true because we know all about pizzas, right? Mathematicians know that they always buy their pizzas from round table. You knew that, right? Yes, of course. I think I've told you this. Mathematicians will always buy their pizza from round table because mathematicians know that pizza pie are not round. Pi are squared. That's right. Okay, moving right along. <laughs> So now we've found the area, basic area formulas for all of the basic shapes. We have length times width for a rectangle, side times side or side squared for a square. We have one half of the rectangle or one half base times height for the triangle. And 
the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. Okay, so now's a good time for you to pause the video and write all these formulas down. I don't think you need to write any of the perimeter formulas down because those are all just add all the sides. The only perimeter formula you should write down is circumference, and circumference is pi times d. So I'll read them off to you while you write. Okay, so circumference is pi times d, and then we have these area formulas. Rectangle is equal to length times width. Square is equal to side squared. Triangle is equal to one-half base times height. And the area of a circle is pi times radius squared. If you need to, stop the video and finish copying. Now for the rest of the semester, you'll be allowed to use these notes on your quizzes that have area. So make sure that you keep those with you. Okay, so now we have not talked about parallelogram, and parallelogram is very similar to rectangle here. Now we know the area of a rectangle is length times width, of course. But when we try to do, the length is not a problem, B is the length here, but what is the width? Is this distance from here to here, this side, this left side of the parallelogram, is that the same length as this width right here of the rectangle? Hmm. So if you think about it, if you were to make a triangle out of this right here on this side, this would be the hypotenuse and obviously cannot be the same as the height right here. Okay, so here's the height and here's the uh, the side of the parallelogram. So the side of the parallelogram does not really help us to find the area of the parallelogram. Think about what if we take this parallelogram and we were to make a rectangle out of it. In other words, I'm going to cut off the left side of this parallelogram, just cut it right here, and then turn it around and move it over to this side and put it right here. Now you would have this line right here going over to here, up here, and over here. So that makes it a rectangle right here. And the length of this rectangle would be the same as the length of this base. But the width of the rectangle here would be the height of this parallelogram. So this is basically your length and width, but in a parallelogram, of course, we call it the base and the height. So it is the same formula as the rectangle, it's just that it's moved over because of it being slanted like that. Okay, so write that formula down. You may need to pause the video for this. Okay, so par parallelogram area is base times height. Okay, now let's do a couple of problems here. So the area of this rectangle is length times width, which in this case would be 4 times 3. Okay, so go ahead and calculate that out in your head. Okay, so you should have gotten 12, but now 12 is not the answer. It is the number of the answer, but it is not the correct answer. The correct answer is 12 units squared. Because remember, we're not just measuring around the outside in units. The length, we're measuring the area, the flat squares, the number of squares that will fit inside of this rectangle. So if there were four chairs here and three chairs here, and we filled it all in with chairs, you would have 12 chairs. Okay, so you're talking about the number of squares in the object, so you would say 12 units squared. Okay, for this one, we would get 3 times 3 for our length times width, but since they're both the same size, we would get 3 times 3, or 3 squared. So 3 squared, of course, is 9. Okay, what about this one? What I want you to do is pause the video and I want you to figure out the area of the triangle and of 
the circle. Okay, hopefully you've done that. And so the area of this triangle right here is the base times the height, but cut in half. So it's one half base times height. So if the base times the height is 12 and we cut it in half, then it would be one half of 12 or six units squared. Good. And the area of the circle is pi times radius squared. So we get pi times four squared or 16 pi. And again, 16 pi would be the exact answer. And we want to leave that exact answer unless they ask us to round, in which case we would take 16 times 3.14 and get an approximation. Okay. Now, I don't necessarily want to solve all of these problems. I can let you do that. But I wanted to talk about how do we go about finding the correct sides of these right triangles. So let's talk about that. How would you find the side of this triangle here? I know the base is 6, but what's the height? Well, if you think about it, it's a 3, 4, 5 times 2, or 6, 8, 10. So the base is 6, the height is 8. The 10 really wasn't helpful except for to help us find that side. We didn't have to multiply the 10 into there anywhere. Okay. So when you're figuring out the uh, base and height of the triangle, sometimes you have to use your families. Now what method would you use for this one? If you said the 45-45 right triangle, you're correct. So that's x, x, x root 2. So we have 6, 6, 6 root 2. We don't need the 6 root 2. We just need the base and the height. The base is 6. The height is 6. So we would do 1 half of 6 times 6 to get the area. What would you use to find this side? Yes, that's right. We would use our 30, 60, 90 right triangles. So 6 times 6 root 3 would be our area. Now remember, when you find the area of a triangle, you always have to cut it in half. So this one would be 1 half 6 times 8. This one would be 1 half 6 times 6. And this one would be 1 half of 6 times 6 root 3. Now let's go ahead and do this one in our head. If this is 6 and this side is 6 root 3, if you multiply those together, 6 times 6 root 3, we get 36 root 3. But now we have to cut that in half because it's a triangle, because our formula is 1 half base times height. So what is 1 half of 36 root 3? That'd be 18 root 3. So the area of this one is 18 root 3 units squared. Again, this is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, but you're going to have to figure out this is the x root 3 side, and that's 6. So what would this side be? I'm going to have to do a little uh, ah going on on that one. So I'll let you play with that one. And then this one, you are not given the other side, so you can't use Pythagorean theorem. You can't use a family. You can't use the 30, 60, 90, or the 45, 45, 90. But we do have this angle right here. So what do you think you would use? That's right, you would use Sokotoa. So let's see, if I want that side and I have this side, this is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. So, ka, toa. Ah, this is tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I would say tangent of 19 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent. And then I can solve for the opposite side and get that measurement there. And then I can use my formula for the right triangle. So sometimes we have to go back to our Pythagorean stuff and our trig stuff in order to figure out this missing side. So I wanted to show you those. Pretty cool, huh? 
I also wanted to show you this because sometimes the height is not quite center and this is a little bit hard to figure out unless they give you one of these two sides so be careful of that sometimes this is right in the middle and you can just cut this uh, B in half to get those two sides but sometimes the height is outside of the triangle that's okay you want to multiply the base times the height now notice I didn't multiply the base from here and all the way across the base is only the base of the triangle from here to here and the height is how tall the triangle is from the ground straight up so that height actually falls outside of the triangle there okay so here's some problems so um, we can do uh, one half of three I'm sorry the, the base would be six and then the height well let's see if this is three and this is six that has to be a 30 60 90 right triangle so three times three root three I'm sorry six three plus three is six for the base so six times three root three would be um, 18 root three and then you're gonna cut that in half so nine root three so 6 times 3 root 3 times 1 half would be your answer there. Pretty much the same thing for this, only you're going to do 3, 4, 5 for that triangle, so the height is 4. So this is 1 half of 6 times 4. So 1 half of 6 times 4 is 1 half of 24, or 12 units squared. And for this one, you're going to have this being 6 right here, and this is unknown and this is a 10 well again this is our 6 8 10 so if this is 8 right here then the length looking at this triangle here this is 8 this is something from here to here and this is 17 8 15 17 so I know the length all the way across here is 15 well, 15 minus 6 would leave this base to be 9. So now I can find the area of this. So I want, half, want the formula to be 1 half of the base only from here to here times the height. So 1 half of um, the base, which is 9, times the height, which is 8. 1 half of 9 times 8 is 1 half of 72. So that would be 36 unit squared. Now how would you do a regular polygon? Well if you'll notice on a hexagon this is an equilateral triangle. So if you take this 6 right here this length would be 6 this would be 3 and 3 and then you can figure out this height right here. And once you know the area of this triangle here, and we did that one in, in one of the first problems on the other page, once we know the area of this, we can multiply by 6 to get the area of the whole thing. For this one, you're going to have to use trig. So these are not required problems, but I'm leaving them there as sort of a challenge for you to do. There are also some other uh, shapes, a uh, trapezoid, the formula for that is one half the top base plus the bottom base times the height. And the area of a kite is one half of this diagonal times this diagonal. So I put some uh, problems here for you to do if you want to practice these other formulas. We do use the parallelogram formula, but we don't usually use the formula for the trapezoid and the kite. So again, those are extra challenge problems if you want to work on those. Now we get to the area of a circle. Let's do a practice problem with that. So let's say that this radius is 3. The formula is pi times the radius squared, so we would get pi times 3 squared, which would be 
9 pi units squared. So now we know the area of all the basic shapes. Thank you for joining me and have a great day.